Friends, colleagues and listeners, here we are, the EVA Showcase, and today's guest is Robin Schneider, who's the Director of Marketing for Green Cubes. Robin, thank you so much for joining us. Great pleasure. Thank you for having me. Really, really appreciate it. Uh, now, what I'd like to do, Robin, first and foremost, is if you could just introduce yourself, how you came to be at Green Cubes, and what actually is Green Cubes, and then we'll go through a few specific little subject matter detail. Yeah. So I'm the director of marketing at Green Cubes Technology. Um, Green Cubes is does the design and manufacturing of lithium ion batteries. Um, Green Cubes has been in existence for about 35 years. Um, we are headquartered in Kokomo, Indiana, where we manufacture our uh, ground support equipment batteries. Um, but we also have sites worldwide for design and manufacturing. Um, we have been supplying motive batteries in things like um, forklifts and uh, AMRs for about 10 years. Um, we have yeah. about 10,000 batteries in the field and we've been doing GSE batteries for almost that long. Um, oh. A little personal aside, um, I actually have a, a PhD in material science um, and I actually studied under uh, John Goodenough, who is the inventor of the lithium ion battery. So if you want to get super technical, I'm good for that. Um, I thank you for pitching that one. I think I'll probably not get too technical. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be. I wouldn't want to be shown up or looking as if I'm at the opposite end of Darwin scale or, or something like that. So, no. It's, it, but it's a great pleasure to meet somebody who's put that amount of time and effort into studies and research. So, well done, you. Absolutely brilliant. <laughs> Thanks. Really, and and can I ask you how how many years did did you do with that PhD? Uh, it took me about five years to do a PhD. Brilliant, brilliant! What an achievement! You you should be very very proud. Really Thank great. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. But so we don't need to talk about me. We're here to talk about. Yeah, that. yeah, but it's. Uh, <laughs> do you know what I mean? That's it. I always admire somebody who, who who does over and beyond. So well done. Right back to green cubes now. Um, if I was if I was to ask you a couple of simple questions. Um, you know, just for the listeners. So first of all, can you tell me about ion batteries and, and how they differ from lead acid batteries, you know, to power EGC, EGSE? So there's lots of talk now about, you know, electri uh, electrification of old GSE and what should happen coming forward. But there's also merits with the battery. So if you can just give me the pros and cons on both. Yeah, so um, lead acid battery technology is actually more than 200 years old. It was developed, um, believe it or not, before the combustion engine. So it's a very, very old technology. Um, it, there have been some improvements in it, obviously, since the 1890s, but it is fundamentally still that older technology. And it's um, got a lot of problems in terms of maintenance requirements, the temperature range that it'll operate at, um, electrical efficiency and things like that. And we can go into that in more detail in a bit. Yeah. Lithium ion, on the other hand, um, is the same type of battery that was developed for cell phones and laptops in the 90s um, and is now used in electric vehicles. Um, but in GSE, we actually use a, a specific chemistry called LFP. And I won't go into the details of what that is. Um, but fundamentally, it's safer than what you would experience with a laptop or cell phone or even an EV. It's more environmentally friendly. It has a really, really good cycle life, like 10,000 cycles. Wow. Um, the downside for that is that this LFP chemistry is bigger and heavier, um, yeah. but that's not really an issue in GSE equipment that is itself fairly large and heavy. Um, and it does... GSE equipment doesn't require um, the capacity of an EV where range is really the metric that you're looking at. With um, GSE equipment, cycle life is more important and also power delivery. Right. Um, lithium ion batteries are uh, environmentally friendly and low maintenance, unlike lead acid. Um, and a single battery will last, last the entire lifetime of the equipment that it's installed in. Um, and it's also not very sensitive to the charging behavior of the operator, unlike lead acid. Right. Okay. Right. I'm 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 with you now so far. So that's good. And then the next one is the driving, the driving force, or the adoption of 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 the lithium ion batteries in EGSE. So you know, there's lots of 
and excuse me for if I'm using the, the, the wrong term, but there's a lot of greenwashing and there's a lot of focus on what should and shouldn't happen. And, you know, even if the optimum or the ideal scenario was in play, um, yeah. there, wouldn't, there wouldn't be the possibility to give the production that's necessary and also the infrastructure to support it. Yeah, I mean, as you know, air, most airlines have some kind of commitment, public commitment to yeah. environmental goals of, in terms of carbon emissions. Um, and then also most airports have some sustainability goals and they have government funds to update um, their facilities. Um, basically, uh, GSC is kind of the low hanging fruit in this space. And, you know, lithium ion specifically is more environmentally friendly. So obviously it's much easier to switch over um, a tugger or a baggage handler to a battery than it is to switch over an airplane. Yeah. Um, so we see this really pretty rapid um, adoption of lithium ion batteries and ground support equipment. Um, a lot of this is due to the efficiency. So why you would choose um, lithium ion over lead acid is that it's 98% electrically efficient as opposed to uh, lead acid that's more like 80% efficient. Yeah. So the electrical bills are lower and also you're meeting some of those sustainability goals. Um, also, because lithium ion batteries are not very sensitive to charging charging operator behavior, yeah. um, they are operationally more efficient. You can have one battery per truck. You can basically charge it essentially however you want, 15 minutes at a time, yeah. an hour at a time, overnight. Any of those will work. And so that can lead to a lot of operational efficiency as well. Yeah, yeah, and that's um, what. Yeah, and because of that, um, in a heavy usage situ situation, like you have at an airport, um, lithium ion, it really becomes a clear choice because it has a, a much higher upfront cost than lead acid. Yeah. Um, but the payback period is close to a year in a 24 seven operation. So airports are, kind of close to that. So, um, you know, the payback period, even with a high upfront cost is pretty fast. Oh, well, that, that, that makes a big difference. Um, can I ask you something now that the, the statistics and the numbers that, that you've just pitched there, it appears as a no brainer. When you get people doing presentations and they're talking this and they're, you know, they very seldom use that black and white obvious um, you know, feet on ground ability to appreciate why something needs to be done. Yeah. What? Yeah. There's a, there's a lot of subtleties in implementing this type of technology. Um, and there are some sort of gotchas in terms of like operator behavior and what they might, um, you know, like, for example, you could have someone park the equipment really far away from the charger yes and then yeah. how do you get it back right do you have to tow it yeah. um are there some kind of like wake up things that you can do do you have a spare battery that you can charge that battery with there's all kinds of yeah. of issues that um you know you might encounter that are challenging but that's yeah. kind of universal for egsc it's not really specific to lithium ion versus lead acid yeah, no, exactly. It's a people. It's a people issue, process and and yeah. structure and, and organization. And um, now, I'm assuming, I'm assuming that you know, like with telematics and with various tracking and monitoring, there's ways to identify to almost alleviate that human human factor element. Not completely, but yes, there's a lot of um, so lithium ion batteries have to have um, a battery management system. Yeah. That is the intelligence of the battery and monitors um, actually every individual cell within the battery. And that then can be communicated over um, CAN bus and you can use that information however you like. So lithium ion batteries inherently are smart um, and you can use all, there's a, just a ton of information coming off of them in terms of um whether or not they need maintenance, whether or not the operator is charging them appropriately, all of that stuff can actually be relayed to, um, you know, someone who would like to use it to improve their efficiency. 
Okay, and and with that, and with some of the data, and the, and and obviously the the amount of data that I'm sure you've got, I. Are you finding any unusual practices or are you finding it, you know, pretty constant and consistent across airports or users? Um, <laughs> there's always outliers, I guess. Um, although I will say that our other major motive market is material handling. So like warehouse environments. Yeah. Um, and those tend to be more sporadic. Airlines are actually, or airports are, are fairly consistent in their usage models. Um, so there's always an outlier, but for the most part, they have a, a fairly consistent usage pattern. Um, and, you know, because of that, um, ground support equipment is actually a really good like early adopter of lithium ion technology because they have kind of have predictable behavior and then have a very specific drive to um, implement this type of technology because of the, um, you know, environmental in initiatives and things like that. Okay. Okay. And, and um, what, where, where are you seeing, where are you seeing any challenges or, or, you know, where are you seeing any hurdles or blockers or, you know, or are, are you seeing, you know, as a full enabler, uh, framework that people can see the benefits they appreciate the benefits as you said earlier it fulfills you know several areas with regards to carbon emissions sustainability so it's all the positives that have to be ticked off on so many check sheets now um so are you seeing it as almost a no-brainer it is kind of a no-brainer but as i mentioned there's challenges in terms of operator behavior and training um and also you need to have technicians that are trained so lithium ion yeah. is very low maintenance as opposed to lead acid where there's like watering that needs to be involved and you need to clean them and stuff like that. Lithium ion is basically a very, you know, it's electronics as opposed to chemistry, I guess. Um, but because of that, you need to have technicians who are comfortable plugging in a laptop to the battery, looking yeah, yeah. at the data, understanding it, understanding if there's something that needs to be adjusted, um, making sure that all the cells stay in balance, that sort of thing. Um, and it's it's very simple, but at the same time, the technicians do need to be trained to maintain the batteries. Yeah. Um, another uh, issue is the elements, right? So ground support equipment obviously is outside. Um, yeah. And yeah. you have airports in Phoenix and you have airports in Iceland. And yeah. so temperature range and exposure to the elements is a really big issue in ground support equipment unlike say material handling. Yeah. Um, lithium ion fundamentally has a very large temperature operating range, um, but at, it, it's charged at low temperature. But um, It can create a dangerous situation. That's actually kind of charging at low temperature is the most uh, dangerous situation you can have a lithium ion battery in. And so the battery needs to have a heater to make sure that when it's charged, it's charged within a safe operating range. Um, and how these heaters work and perform is a little bit tricky because the heater, if you're using it all the time, it can actually drain the battery. Yeah. Um, so you need to have a heater that's, that's smart and responsive to um, the temperature and how the battery is being charged and that sort of thing. But, but fundamentally, lithium ion is really good in terms of a very large operating temperature range. Okay. Um, the other thing is with GSC equipment um, and the elements, there's obviously rain um, and, you know, the cleaners and things like that, you know, the de-icers and all of that yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. And the electronics in the battery obviously can't be exposed to... Um, water and cleaning agents and things like that. So you need to have the electronics be at least IP65. Um, and that's something to look for in a supplier. If your listeners are looking at um, using a lithium ion battery, that's something you definitely need to inquire about that the battery has been at uh, the, the electronics of the battery have been tested to IP65. Okay. Um, oh. one, more, <laughs> one more thing. So the communications, uh, can be very sensitive to electric noise that can come from the equipment. Um, so you also need to be very careful to have um, 
isolation of the CAN and USB communication. So that's another thing that can be um, a challenge for people and to look for uh, when you're implementing this technology to, to test to make sure that there are not issues with that. Okay. I know I know it sounds a it probably sounds an obvious or a stupid question, but the points that you're making and some of the some of the issues, one would assume that the experts or the SMEs within procurement and on the technical side would be aware of a lot of that. But from my experience, I would also suggest that what you think should be in place and what you would expect to be in place is not. So on your website, do you have like an ideal checklist for people to consider when they're, you know, talking to talking to potential, um, you know, parties that could, uh, you know, they, they, they could offer the services? Do you have that on your website? Um. We have that kind of information, yes. And we also have a um, total cost of ownership calculation yeah. that you can do that will look at um, the cost and also the emissions reduction that you can get from um, from implementing lithium ion versus lead acid versus some other combustion engine. So you can actually calculate that type of um, those types of benefits and you can also get information about what to look for in a lithium ion battery and and how to understand how to implement it. A lot of information is on our website, okay. which is, um, by the way, greencubes uh, greencubes.com. There you go. There's the marketing expertise as well. <laughs> they slipped that one in. Good on you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it, it, it's amazing how many of those things are overlooked, though, you know, and then and then it's a it's an expensive lesson or or or, or you know, or a regret lesson afterwards. You know, God forbid if somebody got got hurt in lower temperature charging. Um, yeah. It's, it's so, so, so important. And now do you also do you also do like, you know, support added value services, helping people with training, maybe giving them a little self-assessment or their own check check boxes, you know, so they, they know what they should and shouldn't do, not just relying on what they've done on LMS or, you know, information passing from one technician to another. Yes. So, um, as I said, Green Cubes has been providing um, lithium ion batteries for ground support equipment for a very long time. Um, and we're, I think, arguably the most experienced in this space. Um, if you go to our website, we have um, service videos yeah. um, and training videos that people can watch. We yeah. also do um, training on site at our offices in Kokomo to do to certify um, technicians. And then we also will do on site um, training if that's requested by our customers. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot of information there. Okay. And that's, and obviously, I, I know you'll, you'll agree. It's so, so, so important that people don't just assume they know, but they, they at least do some sort of self-assessment and then somebody else validates and verifies that what they're doing is the correct way to do it. So yeah. those lines are critical, huh? Yeah. And in addition, we have, you know, discovered over time now that we have 10,000 motive batteries in the field that we really need to have a very robust service department yes, with, yes. you know, located all over the United States um, so that if equipment's down, we can be, we can be there in, you know, a day or whatever, yeah. um, you know, that service is very, very important to us. And it's something that, um, I think a lot of lithium ion suppliers who are newer, they don't have that set in place yet. Okay. Yeah. No, that's a, that's a huge USP in it. And, and the thing is you only, you only ever know what you need uh, when 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 you have to have it and unfortunately sometimes that's too late right yeah which um i've just found out with a you know a, a boiler bursting up in the loft <laughs> crazy you know i've learned so many lessons from this damn oh. tragedy and uh you know it, it's a uh, god oh yeah it's a terrible thing <laughs> um, awful but now robin all right we're coming to the end of the session so a, a nice little open one um, and obviously, you've done a lot. You're you're in a great position with a great company. If I was to ask you now, why why green cubes over anybody else? What would your answer be? Well, I'm going to go with um, obviously we've been in this space for a long time, and we have a lot of experience. 
But some of the really simple things are lithium ion batteries at 80 volts are just not very common. There are only a handful of lithium ion battery vendors that supply those period. Um, so we're only a, a, one of a small handful of choices. Um, we offer a battery that's specific to ground support equipment. We're not kind of jerry-rigging in a battery that's actually designed for a forklift or something like that. And that is as simple as um, the fact that our batteries are light colored so that if they're if they're sitting in the sunshine, they're not going to get hot. Okay. Um, you know, that's these are simple things, but they're really important. Um, and then you also want to look for a vendor that has things like spare inventory for support, um, a battery that's based on common building blocks so it's easy to service. These are all things that we've learned with all of our experience yeah. um, that you should look for in a vendor. Okay, nice one. So you've given a good pitch, you've given a good account, and you enlightened me anyhow, and I'm sure many of the listeners as well. Um, it'd be great, great to see you at a conference or one of the shows and um, look forward to catching up again. And yes, I will be at GSE Expo in September. So please come by our booth and I uh, can speak to me or some of our engineers. And that's in Lisbon, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Yep. Really, really pleased to have you on. And thank you so much for your time and insight. And again, well done you with the PhD. <laughs> thank you so much. I appreciate thank it. Thank you.